My name's Wheeler Utah. I'll be taking on Daniel Garcia for the Ring of Honor Pure Championship at Final Battle this Saturday. And this is the Battleground Podcast. What's up, you guys? Welcome back into iHeartRadio's official wrestling podcast, the Battleground Podcast. It is a big week here on the show. There is a big pay-per-view going down this Saturday night in Texas. Let me bring in my co-host real quick. Eli joins us on. What's up, buddy? Man, I hate I didn't get that hat before they sold out. That's oh, bro. I, I, was, I was lucky enough to snag this one and the, uh, the, uh, the Houston, Tennessee Oilers yeah. one. Um, but yeah, I was I was pretty stoked about that. But of course, uh, we're not here to talk about the Tennessee Titans. We're not here to talk about uh, football in general. We're here to talk about a a little show that's happening this weekend. Ring of Honor final battle is going down, and of course, we got a guest on the show today. A guy that we've been uh, talking about how he's kind of been on the bucket list to end out twenty twenty two with, and it just so happens uh, we just go ahead and uh, you know cross that off the bucket list of guests, right? Works for me. Let's do so it. So let's let's go ahead and bring him in. Wheeler Yuta joins the show. Woo, woo, woo. There he is. How you doing, sir? Doing good. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming on the show. We, uh, when we uh, jumped at the uh, the gun to try to figure out who we wanted for the Ring of Honor final battle pay per view that's this Saturday, uh, we saw the list of people on there, and I was like, you know what? We 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 can ask for Jericho, and we can ask for this, but the the top one, it's got to be Wheeler. I mean, oh, my man's had a hell of a year for twenty twenty two. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah, it's been uh, been a crazy year for me, crazy year in wrestling. So yeah, excited to close down on a, a strong note at Final Battle. Man, it's going to be insane at Final Battle. So let's let's kind of jump into this. I mean, I 2022 was a big year for Wheeler Yuta and of course, uh, you know, the BCC. But kind of the biggest headline going into 2023, William Regal joining uh, Blackpool Combat Club. And after you and Claudio defeated Daniel Garcia and Hager, there was a video of Regal that played and everybody was like, oh my God, it's Regal. Everybody was excited about it, which essentially kind of, I guess, served as a, a goodbye. I mean, it's it's been noted. Tony said it in the media call. And, you know, on Twitter, he posted the following. William Regal posted this. To the, to the member of the BCC, my favorite song by my favorite band who somehow – Knew when I was a child to write the story of my life. It's been a pleasure, fellas. We'll meet again. How are you feeling after all of this? And where do you and, uh, you know, the BCC go from here? Yeah, of course. Uh, watching that video was, he, he ended it with, uh, fellas, it's been emotional. And honestly, it really has. Like, I, I owe the whole Blackpool Combat Club and Regal especially, like, a lot. This has been the most incredible run of my career. Like, it's really a dream come true to be surrounded by all these guys and to be able to learn from them and pick their brains. So being able to get everything I got from Regal was awesome. But now, just like he said, that was our last lesson. And now it's time to, you know, kick things up a notch. It's time to take everything that he's taught us and use it to really take over, to take over wrestling, take over AEW and uh, take over Ring of Honor as well. Yeah, one of the coolest images over this past year was you coming out with the pure heavyweight title and Regal beside you and you two giving each other the look and mm -hmm. then going down like that. That was just I mean, even now I got chills just thinking about it. So uh, from I guess this may be a little more of a personal question uh, or maybe not worse anyways i think you'll get it when i ask you uh so what, what do you what's your personal what do you think of tony's decision not to renew regal's option um and allow him to go you know go back and, and then work with his son now uh you know i think tony said it best you know he's very uh he's a very family oriented person and you know when you have an opportunity like that for uh for mr regal where mm -hmm. you know he, he's it's an opportunity he's never had in his career. And these are the formative years of his son, you know, working uh, as a wrestler. So I think it's going to be great for him to coach him there. Um, yeah. I think that it's, I understand completely on, on both sides uh, why the yeah. decision was made. Yeah. So, so I guess then some, some things just go beyond wrestling and, you know, Lord Regal definitely gets some of those passes, you know, with his career and stuff. Yeah. Right. For sure. For sure. So here's, is always an interesting thing. Cause I mean, you look at who you're surrounded with in uh, the BCC, you've got Claudio, you've got Brian's uh, Daniel or Brian Danielson, you've got Moxley. I can only imagine you didn't have uh, be mentored by Brian Danielson, John Moxley and Regal. And of course, win ROH pure championship on your 2022 bingo card. Did you? 
Uh, not at all. There's <laughs> so so many things to just layers to break down of that. Like the the pure championship. I at first, uh, you know, it was defunct for a very long time, um, mm -hmm. and then when they brought it back, and I was in the pure, I was actually in the tournament to crown the new pure wrestling champion. Uh, when I came up short with that, and then my career kind of took another turn, I wound up in AEW. I thought, all right, well, that's that's one I'll never get. That was just a missed opportunity I'll never have. And then to see it all come back around full circle, it was like, all right, I have unfinished business. Let's go. Let's do it. So that was, yeah, that was something I didn't think would happen in my 2022. And then, yeah, I. it's really funny. I actually went home uh, after joining the Blackpool Combat Club and saw some of my friends from like middle and high school. And they're like, oh. can you imagine like telling yourself <laughs> that this is your life? This is yeah. your group. These are your mentors. Right. And I was yeah. like, yeah, it's unreal. Like I, it's, it really is like more than I ever could have imagined. So I'm just trying to take advantage and uh, ride the wave as long as I can. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And uh, you know, the Blackpool combat club I've been phenomenal. We've loved it. I, I kind of wish there would have been a trios title there involved for you guys, but you know, there's other things that had to happen and everybody else gets some titles here and there, but is this the end of the first version of the, uh, the Blackpool combat club? I mean, can you try to put into words what that means? If this is it, which we hope it's not right. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's just going to evolve a little bit. I think it's just going to morph into, you know, we've, it's really, if anything, it's refocusing, you know, we've been so tied up with the Jericho Appreciation Society that I think we almost forgot uh, what we're, what we're here for and what we're trying to do. And that's to set forth our vision of wrestling. That's to leave our scar, leave our mark on pro wrestling. And now I think that, you know, obviously we no longer have the world championship, um, but I think that we're more focused and more hungry than ever. You know, we're starving. Yeah. We want that. We want these opportunities. We want that gold. Claudio wants the world, the ring of honor world title. I want the pure championship. Mox mm -hmm. wants to get his world title back. I think that we're all very focused and we're all very hungry. So I'm not sure if uh, the Blackpool Combat Club 2.0 is going to be all that different, uh, except that it might be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more vicious and a little bit more mm -hmm. focused. For sure. Yeah, and there's you know you've got the IWC fantasy booking and stuff. There's there's rumors going around, or not rumors. I guess more people are kind of throwing it out in the universe. Uh, you guys may be bringing in the guy uh, Nigel McGinnis, you know, to kind of take Regal's spot. I think with his history of Ring of Honor, and then obviously with like Brian Danielson, that would be great. Do you think you guys might get a new leader, or you think you're gonna just run, just run it with you guys? I mean, I think that Nigel's awesome, but I think that what we're probably going to wind up doing for the BCC is just taking it forward ourselves. You know, we've yeah. we've already learned a lot, and now it's up to those three, I guess, to help continue to mentor me. Uh, right. You heard Regal say it himself. Yeah. So I think that it's going to probably be the four of us going from now on. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it ends. You know, I, I'm certainly not ruling it out. And yeah. like I said, Nigel's awesome, and I think that his style would, you know. Obviously, he's not active anymore, but his style mm -hmm. fit in great with what we were doing. So, yeah, I I think he's great, but I think for right now, it'll be the four of us. Yeah, makes sense. I mean, Regal left you with a lot of ammunition, so I'm sure. Oh, yeah. You, yeah. Um, <laughs> you also, yeah, so you also competed at the uh, Best of the Super Juniors uh, in New Japan last spring, um, and uh, that was right That was right after you joined Blackpool as well, yeah. Um, what um, – so – I guess specifically referring to the Blackpool Combat Club, what has just being associated with that group, what has that done for you in other promotions and rings in the world? Not only from your actual performance, but just maybe even your mystique. I mean, has, has it given you an edge? They're like, oh shit, he's with Mox and Brian. <laughs> like, is, it, is any of that kind of stuff going on? Yeah, it's definitely very different. Like it's a very different presentation, obviously, <laughs> as to what yeah. I do and the style that I do in the ring. So, yeah, I think it has given me kind of that competitive edge. Um, you mentioned Best of the Super Juniors. That was such an awesome experience, such a great tournament. Uh, that was like right after I joined the Blackpool Combat Club. So I think I was still trying to find that edge, trying to find, uh, you know, how what that metamorphosis would be. And mm -hmm. I think that that experience was great for that. I had so many matches against so many good people. I, I really can't say enough good things about my experience there. Um, I did promise uh robbie eagles and el desperado both uh pure title matches uh mm. after they beat me uh so if i if i am able to regain uh my my pure championship at final battle i would still love to do those down the road um you know there's a few others that uh I, i'm sure would like to challenge as well 
yeah. But yeah, the Super Juniors was awesome. But yeah, it definitely did give that mystique, that little bit of edge. And you can definitely hear it, especially on like independent shows that I do. Oh, now. yeah. It's it's a little different. <laughs> yeah, different. I, I, I can imagine. Yeah. It seems like over the last year, anytime you guys have been in the Northeast, not just in Pennsylvania, just Northeast, you got you have gotten a lot of reactions uh, from the crowd. So, yeah, you can definitely tell that kind of shift for sure. Yeah, and of course, uh, we're we're here to talk about Ring of Honor uh, this Saturday, Ring of Honor Final Battle, live on pay-per-view in Arlington, Texas. Uh, what's really cool about this is it's an afternoon show. So 4 p.m. Eastern, oh. Nashville time, it's 3 <laughs> o'clock. Like, let me ask you this, because if you've wrestled on the pay-per-views before, are you, are you excited that it's an afternoon show so you can have the night to go out and do stuff afterwards so it's not like 3 o'clock in the morning night kind of call? Well, funny enough, after the show, I have a, I'll be wrestling for it. We just brought up New Japan. I'll be at uh, New Japan Strong the next day. So after oh, wow. the show, I'm actually <laughs> going to fly to Los Angeles instead. Um, but, yeah, I, I am excited for an afternoon show. I always like uh, having an earlier earlier day, earlier show. I feel like the, the worst part sometimes for me is just the waiting. You know, uh -huh. I spend all day just walking in circles around the arena especially if i have a match i'm very nervous all day i'm just walking yeah. in circles around and around and around so being able to have the match at you know four o'clock is like oh this is perfect <laughs> i can yeah. just get in be focused and there we go so good to uh, go i mean yeah. even a couple of weeks ago when rampage was on in the afternoon on black friday the day after thanksgiving mm -hmm. i loved it i was just like what am i gonna do like oh it's 3 30 and then bam and then you know i, I love the early stuff so I'm right, I'm right there with you, yeah. It's good stuff. So we, we have this kind of thing on this show where we're either... I didn't know if you are going to bring this up or not. So I, was, I, I, I am going to bring this up because he's wrestling for the title. So yeah. we have this, this track record on the show that somebody that comes on the show, if they're wrestling for the title, after they go on this show, they go on to win the title. We also have a track record that when people have the title, they come on the show, they go on to lose said title. Yeah. Well, recently we had Daniel Garcia on the show. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was our fault. <laughs> yeah. So it was our fault that he took oh, the wait. title from you. Well, for my loss. Yeah. When yeah. I lost it. I thought but, you had like this week. No. Yeah. Oh, so, so no. But, but, so, but, but now but you're back on. Is, but the thing yeah. is, is you're back on. You're on our show. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're going to get it. You go on to win the title. Like, for example, mm -hmm. so Daniel Garcia came on. And then literally days later, unfortunately, he beat you for the ROH Pure title. Sorry, <laughs> yep, sorry. Yep. That that you could blame that on us. Uh, we did that. That with, was uh, not our pick, by the way. We, it was, we did not see him take no. it. No. And uh, <laughs> we did that with Cardona. He came on two days later, won the NWA World Heavyweight title. So you're on the show. We're saying that you're in good graces. It's in the universe that you're on the Battleground podcast. You get the lock. You're going to win the title come Saturday. So you're set for another uh, crash course with Daniel Garcia at final battle. What makes Daniel Garcia a, per a perfect opponent for Wheeler Yuta? And do you have to do this? Uh, what do you have to do in this match to reclaim your gold or silver? It's silver, right? Yeah, it's silver. Yeah, it's, it's more of a silver. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think that uh, Daniel Garcia and I are, uh, you know, we're very similar wrestlers. I think that there's two kinds of matches that can be really good when opponents are so far different that there's this great contrast. That can always be a great match. But then there's also times where people are just so similar. It's like mirror images of each other. And they just keep countering, countering, countering. And I think that that's more of what, what we have. So I think I need to, you know, maybe get a little dirty. Maybe find a little bit of an edge uh, to beat him. You know, we've wrestled. Uh, we're actually 1-1-1 one, one, and one, uh, with that one, the last one being a one-hour draw. Oh, yeah. uh, that was the first time that we wrestled. So mm -hmm. we've, we've definitely seen pretty much every trick each other has. So I think that we're just going to have to, whoever can be more creative, whoever can find more ways to maybe use the rules, uh, maybe cheat the rules a little bit, depending on uh, what opportunities present themselves. I think mm -hmm. that might be uh, who comes out on top with the edge. But yeah, I think that we're just such similar wrestlers. We'll be wrestling each other for a long time. Hopefully this will be uh, the end of this chapter. This will be yeah. the final battle for now. But I think that there's more chapters to be written later. Yeah, it kind of gives me, you know, Ric Flair, uh, Ricky Steamboat vibes, you know, like, you know, they're very, you know, Ric Flair's dirtier, but Steamboat maybe more athletic. And I mean, like they and they had their matches were just incredible. So, yeah, kind of that back and forth. Yeah, yeah. I'll let you be Ric Flair in that example. How about or I don't know, maybe you'll be Steamboat. In that you got to ask him which one, who he wants to be I'm in that situation. I 
I'd prefer to be Steamboat. I was a big yeah. Steamboat guy when I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. He just had another match, and people were Unreal. like, pretty real yeah i was watching yeah, and i was yeah. like my man is still going he's out there yeah. just he's not he's not relaxing either uh, yeah uh, i think it's like 10 years since he had like the jericho matches yeah, and i think, I think so. that was like his last i think he did like a loop of untelevised like house shows and then i, I think, think he did so. the pay-per-view yeah i think yeah. that was it i don't think yeah. he's wrestled since so that's insane because i remember yeah. even then everyone was like i can't believe he can still go and right was, right well, and you look at, you know, Sting's still going. I mean, like yeah. some of these guys are just, I think they're just freaks and some people just can do it and some can't. <laughs> genetics. You know, just, genetics. I think Sting's yeah. indestructible. I'm yeah, kidding. there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So this is kind of a fun one. Um, you guys may not have gotten into this far yet because of all the stuff going on. But uh, Saturday in the main event, Claudio will be uh, facing Jericho for a rematch for the uh, Ring of Honor world title that he lost. Um, if he loses, he will be forced to join the Jericho Appreciation Society, which no one wants to do. Uh, mm -hmm. And he will have to wear that dumb purple hat. So do, do you, uh, Daniel Santa Mox, do you guys have any potential replacements in mind for Claudio? Or do you think it'll be kind of what you said earlier, kind of like, well, if Claudio has to go to be you three, just focusing on, on your stuff. If by some act of God, like Claudio got struck by lightning in the ring and gets pinned, then yeah, I guess we would, it would just be the three of us. But no, I, I don't think that Claudio would uh, take on a stipulation like this if he wasn't supremely confident in his abilities. I mean, obviously he's wrestling Chris Jericho and you can never count that as a guaranteed win. Um, the JAS is always, you know, lurking in the background as well. Mm -hmm. So something may have to be done to neutralize that as well. But yeah, there's, um, I think that it would just be the three of us, but I think that Claudio would not take this kind of a stipulation if he wasn't supremely confident. You know, he's, he hasn't won when it, you know, when the title's on the line, but he has beaten Chris Jericho twice. And I, I think he'll do it a third time this weekend. Yeah. And you know, you, you can say what you want about Jericho, but I mean, since he got that title from Claudio, he legit has been a fighting champion now. Oh, absolutely. Some he's of the done, matches are, you know. Yeah, Maybe Method, methods is. aside, methods yeah. and ideologies aside, Chris has done so much for the Ring of Honor title. You know, yeah, being able really to has. bring it and present it on television to a whole new audience that has never seen it before, like that, it's it really does like so much for the Ring of Honor championship. But Absolutely. I think that Claudia will be able to bring honor back to it and then be able to do a similar thing as well. Yeah, right. we got to uh we actually got to see uh Claudio in that title when they were here for uh Starcast during that weekend. Mm -hmm. That is a nice looking belt. And I, I think it, it would look better with you guys and Claudio. So yeah, uh, and it, yeah, let's yeah, go back and let's go back and get it. You get your uh your pure title, Claudio mm -hmm. gets the ROH title, Moxley uh goes after the uh the uh, I hate to say it, the B B B title, you know, mm. that that big old that which leads us to our next that. question. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Cause I saw that and I was like, what? What is that? Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. but what do you what do you think of uh MJF being AEW world champion? Because there was you had you had some moments there here recently and what do you think of him being I guess the new unofficial as we do finger quotes face of the company yeah i think uh you know mjf is someone that i've known for a very long time and i think that we all knew that he was one day destined for greatness now the way that he did it uh the way that it's all come about i'm not sure if i agree with you know obviously i did not want to see uh, our mentor betray us uh mm -hmm. and you know cost us the title that way but i think that we all knew that at some point max was going to be the world champion max was going to uh, have his run at the top and now here it is and now the ball's in balls in his hands let's see if he can run with it yeah we shall see we also got to get danielson a belt man he hasn't he hasn't had a belt since he got here has he no i don't think he has because he mm -hmm. did he fought kenny omega to draw he didn't beat hangman no he, he hasn't had a belt we gotta get him a belt yeah maybe he could take it from joe there's a TV oh, title there around there. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Or if Claudio does go to Jericho, maybe you three get the trios. Because I think you you guys against Death Triangle or the Elite would be holy crap. Yeah, <laughs> that banger. was some fantasy booking right there. Jeez. Yeah. Once uh, once that best of seven gets wrapped up, that would be awesome. You know. We, yeah. Either we've one had a couple teams. six man tag matches and a few different iterations, and they've all been so much fun. Yeah. I think that we would we would really tear it up like that. 
I definitely agree with that. that um, speaking, uh, we're a few weeks away from the new year. Uh, what does 2023 look like for Wheeler Yuda? And what are some of your goals and plans for the new year? Not only in AW, but maybe outside, you know, New Japan or something. Yeah, I would love to uh, wrestle more for New Japan. I've had such a great time every time uh, I've done like strong in the United States. And mm -hmm. then the Super Juniors, of course, in Japan was just a great experience. Um, but as far as an AEW, I just want to see, I guess, the Blackpool Combat Club uh, really reach its full potential. You know, mm -hmm. we're talking about this this second wave of whatever it's going to be, and I'm really excited for it. And uh, it, additionally, I'd like to, you know, win back my pure title this weekend and then bring that division forward because mm -hmm. I think that there's a whole new audience that can see these pure matches with these different rules, different stipulations. It's so much like it's so different. It but really it's also is. so much fun to be able to like play with those rules and use mm -hmm. them to your advantage in certain cases. Like uh, I love when people exhaust all three rope breaks and then get submitted in the ropes, stuff like yeah. that. Like mm -hmm. there's so many different ways to play with it or uh, yeah. Dak Draper was a guy who used to just punch people and he would always use his one punch. So there's all, there's all these different strategies, all these different ways you yeah. can do it. So I enjoy it. But to be honest, uh, my 2022 bingo card did not look great. Uh, compared to what it, what actually turned out so uh -huh. i don't know how my 2023 predictions are going to go but right well, <laughs> well and you know <laughs> we're, we're probably going to do another forbidden door next year so if you're mm. pure champion you could cash in those title matches there yeah. or even do a three three man three man yeah match I'd love to. Sure. i like how we're already booking this like you've already got the belt <laughs> we're, right. we're like yeah, I mean, he's, on, he's on the show he's gonna he come on, on to win the true. title he's see i don't have know. an roh pure title back here that i can't be like hey you're gonna win this title all i've got is the yeah. roh heavyweight and the tv title over there I've got um, the heavyweight and tag, but i mean you're gonna go on to win the the, the title this saturday so that we, we, we're already booking your future once you have that title that's the goal. um <laughs> that, that's the goal and that's the plan because again you're on the show the track record speaks for itself you're gonna win a gold this week <laughs> silver this weekend uh i know you're a busy man so we're, we're gonna ask you one more question and then we'll let you go where can people keep up with you online where's the best place uh, so I'm not the most active on social media, but if you do want to follow me there, it's uh, Twitter and Instagram at Wheeler Utah. Uh, but if it's important, I'll tweet it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's where you can find me on, on the internet. And then of course, just keep watching AEW. Uh, you'll see me way more there than you will online, to be honest. Boom. Yeah. Again, I am ring of honor final battle this Saturday on pay-per-view 4 PM Eastern live from Arlington, Texas. You're going to see Daniel Garcia, Wheeler, you to go for the ROH Pure Championship. You're going to see uh, at the end of that match, you're going to say, and new ROH Pure Ooh. Champion, Ooh. Wheeler, you to, and then Garcia is probably going to be laying there in a pool of blood because let's be honest, he's probably going to get busted open because yeah. Wheeler, you is not one to mess with. And we'll do this. If Daniel tries to come back on the show, we'll say no. We'll, we'll say, nope, yeah. we can't do it again. We're not. Unless he's wrestling for just some other. Belt. Yeah, okay. if him okay. and Jericho split and he goes after Jericho, yeah, we'll do it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll do it that way, but not, <laughs> yeah, yeah. not, not, not anytime soon. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought he was already going to, you know, they kind of were hinting at the split, like, please, come on. And then he, I was like, do you not want to punch Jericho in the face? Like, that, like, that would have been the time right there. Like, none of us, we don't get that. <sighs> yeah, anyways, so. <laughs> That was that was my vent. So, <laughs> hey, I mean, you know, you know where I'm at. So there you go, there you go, <laughs> hey, buddy. 